Ovarian cancer is a relatively rare but deadly cancer. A medical consultant and gynecologist at the Uganda Cancer Institute has referred to it as a silent killer. Dr. Anthony Okos says over 80% of the affected victims always show signs of this cancer at an advanced stage which lessens their chances of survival. Dr. Okos also says it is currently the second most common cancer in Uganda after cervical cancer. The surface of the ovary and uh, expose it to a, a, a hormone that tends to induce cell division, something which is called estrogen. So it is believed that uh, this incessant ovulation leads to continuous injury to the ovarian surface and in the process of repair something possibly goes wrong and instead of normal cells being formed in the repair process, abnormal cells are formed and these are um, cancerous cells. 20-year-old Alice Nanchinga has been battling ovarian cancer for about three years now. She told us how it all started. I was in a six-pack by the time I realized that I wasn't fine. I felt a small swelling around my waist. It moved to my umbilical cord, so when I lie down, I would see a small bump on my stomach. So I ignored it actually. But three months later, it shifted close to her navel. The swelling occupied my whole stomach. So we did some testing and they said I had an ovarian cyst, which was extracted immediately around June, that is 2014. When it was removed, it was tested without cancer cells. So the doctors are like, you're fine, these things won't come back. However, Dr. Okos told us that the doctors had a lot to examine at that point. What could have been done, although probably uh, the, the benefits of that uh, could be questionable, would, would have been to open the whole abdomen. And because by the time it has uh, come to the umbilicus, there must be a lot of tumor inside that abdomen. Nanchinga's condition got worse. As time went on, I kept on getting water in my stomach, ascites, which was drained continuously every month for six months. As they were draining it, other tumors developed. Three in my ovaries, around my ovaries, and another one in my spleen. So I had, by this time, I had gone, started campus because I thought me I was fine. Then I realized those tumors and I was in so much pain I could not eat or talk or do anything. Dr. Okoth explains why Nanchinga felt that way. Because the, the, the surfaces of these organs to secrete fluid, which then accumulates in the abdomen and leads to, to symptoms. Leads to symptoms and it gives you a distended abdomen. At that stage, the probable management is an extensive surgery where medics remove as much tumor as they can but it is normally done after thorough medical examinations are carried out on the patient. That kind of operation uh, um, usually involves a lot of blood loss and uh, the, the danger for the patient is very high. The morbidity is high, recovery after surgery is, uh, is very, very uh, tumultuous. And sometimes, of course, people even lose life. Nanchinga was then advised to go for surgery. Her doctors told her it would reduce the pain. They removed the spleen and my whole uterus because the doctor was like, the uterus is the one causing all these problems. So it was extracted from my body, which wasn't a pleasing procedure. Nanchinga dropped out of Makerere University Business School where she had begun her first year bachelor's degree in human resource. Her dream was shattered and she became even more depressed. You end up wanting to commit suicide because chemo is very, very painful. Nanchinga is now seeking 60 million shillings for her medication in India. Ovarian cancer risk factors include cigarette smoking, longer periods of ovulation, infertility, having a few number of children, genetics and mutation from parents carrying the cancer gene, absence of the Lynch syndrome gene, 
which repairs abnormal genes that are known to cause cancer, among others. Dr. Okoth says there are some preventive measures one can take to avoid the risk factors. Such people are advised to have their children early and then uh, the ovaries removed. One, or depending upon the risk and age, <coughs> both ovaries. Use of contraceptives in those persons, in those females, uh, at a time when they, they are not yet ready to have children would definitely be a very good idea. Uganda is incapable of treating many types of cancers at the national referral hospitals across the country because of the lack of equipment. Dr. Okoth says many of the patients, especially those in health center fours, die of the disease. He says they are still understaffed to match the need for service delivery. In April this year, the only radiotherapy machine used to treat cancer patients broke down and is yet to be repaired. The construction of the radiotherapy bunker will cost government about 25 billion shillings and the Ministry of Finance has already committed itself to make funds available. This machine is mainly for internal radiotherapy. Walter Mwesije, NTV. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.